This week we have come into the Gospel of Luke. The first part of the Gospel of Luke has more on Jesus' birth and youth, <laughs> more on Jesus' birth, the events surrounding his birth, than any of the Gospels. I say youth because it also has the account of Jesus at 12 years old in the temple. Uh, the other Gospels don't contain that. Luke does as he has collected all of the material from many different sources, he has brought us so much and so many, so many riches uh, come to us regarding Jesus' birth and the events surrounding it. One of those events that we will be looking at today is the encouragement, the comfort, the strength that the angel Gabriel, a special angel who stands in the presence of God, the passage says, that that a particular angel gave to Mary, the mother of King Jesus. And how Mary responded to the news that she would be the mother of the Messiah, the Davidic king. Well, let's catch up with a story with Mary's interaction with Gabriel. Verse 34. Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now, the, narrative, the, the story goes on to say that Mary responded in faith to the message that she would be the mother to the Messiah. She is, that's very different than another man here who, did, who was also given a similar message regarding John the Baptist, and he did not believe. But Mary did. Mary did. And the way that she ended up believing had very much to do with the way that the message from the angel Gabriel, the same angel that had addressed the man without faith, um, draw, drew the faith out of the woman here, had a lot to do with the message that that angel brought. And the angel, one of the things that he, he said and he, he used to encourage her was that there was another <laughs> Another woman, and it happens to be a woman that she knows, who was in a situation where it would be impossible for her to give birth, just as it was impossible for Mary to give birth since she's a virgin. That just doesn't happen. It was impossible for this old woman, and she was Mary's cousin, but much older than her, right? I mean, she... Presuming that Mary is 16, and then this lady is most likely 16 or so in her teens, and then this lady was most likely at least in her 50s, then she could be even her mother. But she happens to be her cousin, her cousin Elizabeth. She's pregnant too. She has a miraculous pregnancy too. And so that was to be an encouragement for her. In fact, a little bit later, we find that she does go to her cousin, cousin Elizabeth, and Mary is encouraged by her cousin, as we will see tomorrow. But the point is, God was already bringing about. Look, what God says he's going to do for Mary was not something that was unprecedented. In fact, just six months earlier, her, 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 her cousin, who was called Baron who was called unable to conceive, just like Mary as a virgin was unable to conceive. She's already pregnant for six months now. Now, Mary, a good Sabbath day school, Sabbath day school student, would have known, would have hearkened back that this was not the first time, it would not, she would not be the first time for whom God did this kind of miracle. Elizabeth would not have been the first time. I'll go back a little further. The judge, Samuel, was born out of an impossible situation. 
of his mother, Hannah, who was also called barren. Samson was also born from an impossible situation of a woman that was called barren. How about Isaac, Abraham's wife, the father of faith? Sarah bore Isaac when she was way past, almost 100 years old, when she gave birth to Isaac. So Mary was in a line of miraculous births that God had brought about. And the, all of those miraculous incidences, that good company was pointing to this one. Pointing to this one, the Messiah, the birth of the Messiah, who would be born out of the impossible circumstance of a virgin womb. Mary being a virgin does not necessarily point to her purity or anything else, or even really to her faith, but to the miraculous work of God, the work of the Holy Spirit. And that's the point here. The point is not that because Mary's birth, the birth of Jesus was from a virgin that Jesus would not have, a, have any original sin. No, that's not it. Jesus was sinless because he was and is the Son of the Most High, born of the miraculous work of the Holy Spirit. That's right. That's what it was. That's what we point to. That's what we see when we see Jesus being born of Mary the Virgin. This was the miraculous work of the Holy Spirit. And because it was, that's why Jesus is sinless, and his sinlessness made him qualified to be our divine replacement, divine substitute, the Lamb of God provided for our sin. God is so good. God is so tender with Mary, is he not? I mean, he's doing a bunch of different things all at once, fulfilling prophecy and prophetic expectation. Yes, all of that. But it's just at the level of human experience. Mary, go. See? Go to your cousin. See. I'm already doing something very similar to what you will endure. So take courage. I look back at my own life and, I, and around every serious decision, every serious choice, every serious transition, there has always been these markers, these signs. I, by the grace of God, never depended on, on any of them as a basis for the decisions that I've made. It has been and it has to be always. The Word of God, the Word of God, the Word of God. You look at your choices and you lay out the Word of God and what best honors the Word of God. That's the choice you make regardless of the circumstances or the circumstantial signs. But when these seeming coincidences and other things just come together, God is just being God and providing an extra measure of comfort and strength. That's just how he is, isn't he? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful, beautiful comfort. Lord, I remember these signs being given to Myself and my family, back to back to back to back at times. And I remember looking over at my wife, pointing something out. And she, she, I remember specifically, she said to me, yeah, it doesn't even surprise us anymore. Yeah, but certainly it brings joy because it is the reminder that you've got this, that you've got our lives in your capable, loving, nail-pierced hands. Thank, thank you for the comfort, the encouragement you gave Mary, and the encouragement you give to us day by day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Surrounded by such true and gentle
To see the 